The NASCAR Pinty Series is back on the streets, this time at the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières. It is a ferocious championship fight, and 60 laps of action are straight ahead. The NASCAR Pinty Series has crisscrossed this great country, showcasing why this is Canada's premier division showcasing why these are the greatest racers in the nation, all chasing the 2022 NASCAR Canadian Championship right here on TSN. And welcome to race number nine of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at the 52nd running of the Grand Prix of 20 Pierre. This is the Julia Wine presents the Russo Medals 60. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is trackside. Moments ago, some severe weather hit this region, which had NASCAR and the promoters here scrambling. Some rain and a lot of lightning has put these Pinty's teams in a hurry-up mode, as well as our own Todd Lewis. After lots of sunshine throughout the entire weekend, the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières has been thrown a curveball for the NASCAR Pinty Series. It's been deemed a wet race, guys. They will be switching over to rain tires. Andrew Ranger is a four-time winner here on the streets of Trois-Rivières. Yes, he would very much like to have a fifth. He had his worst finish a year ago. LP Dumoulin, his hometown race, a two-time winner here, a three-time champion. Yes, he'd like another victory as well. Mark antoine Cameron has led more laps than anyone this season. He is not one here on the streets of Trois-Rivières. That would be a huge boost to his championship standings points fight. And Kevin Lacroix, the current leader in the championship points fight. New colors this weekend with the Napa sponsorship. A two-time winner here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. And Kevin Lacroix, new car, but same lots of speed here you've seen this weekend. Yeah, always fast here. Uh, we just need a little bit more luck than... Uh... The past five years, you know, our last win here was in 2016, so uh, need to get it done today again. Good luck, Kevin. Thank you. All right, that's Kevin Lacroix. He will lead them to the green flag coming up shortly here on the streets of Trois-Rivières. Yesterday is when we held E3 spark plugs pole qualifying. Fast out of the box was the 96 of Mark Antoine camera, and you can see completely different weather conditions, too. And, and while he has not won this event with the NASCAR Pinty Series, he is the winningest driver in the history of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Yeah, he was up near the front for most of this as we did go out in group qualifying, but it was the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Those new colors, as Todd mentioned, quickest with a 106.947. And that was good enough to top the speed charts. Not a huge surprise. I mean, the cast of characters that contend for these pole positions is a pretty small group. The Lacroix, the Ranger, the Tag, the Annie, the Cameron, and quite often Kevin Lacroix gets it done. 32 years old. That's his 13th career pole. So 26 cars have lined up here on the front straightaway. But let's look at the point standings, and more importantly, let's look at how close they are. Coming out of the western swing, DJ Kennington just one point behind Cameron. Although things didn't go his way, five points out. But how about LP Dumlin, eight points back? It is a hot one today. It's been very, very humid here in Trois-Rivières for the past few days. The track is wet but drying quickly in this 30-plus degree heat. The cars have not moved to rain tires yet. NASCAR will bring them to pit lane on their warm-up lap. That's the plan. And you can bet all of the crew chiefs are looking around this racetrack. There are spots that are drying. There are spots that are still quite wet. It's going to be anyone's guess what they choose to go to throughout the race. But let's send it down trackside for the traditional command here at GP3R. Mesdames, Messieurs, pour prononcer l'invitation traditionnelle à lancer les moteurs, ce sera un travail d'équipe. Nous accueillons l'équipe championne du hockey universitaire canadien en 2022. Les Patriotes de l'Université du Québec à Trois-Rivières. Pilote, démarrez vos moteurs. Drivers, start your engine. That's the members of the Patriots, University of Québec, Trois-Rivières hockey team with the command to fire engines and drivers obliged here on the front shoot. 
Mark Antoine Cameron going to have it on board. So is Matthew Kingsbury. I love this look, a clear visor. We'll see what's on L.B. Dumoulin's mind. See a few drops still on the windshield of some of these cars, including on the 07 of Jacques Villeneuve, former Formula One world champion. Some big names, some big stories. We're going to follow here from the streets of Trois de NASCAR on TSN broadcast is brought to you by Pinchies, making great food fun. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. And by Senny, a multinational heavy equipment manufacturer. Well, Dave, NASCAR has reevaluated the track conditions, and these 26 NASCAR Pinty's cars will start on the general tire slicks that they qualified on yesterday, meaning NASCAR has deemed this now a dry racetrack. And one driver not on this warm-up lap is the 07 of Jacques Villeneuve. His Prolon Technologies Dodge would not stay fired. The team, led by longtime Villeneuve crew chief Bill Burns, working on the situation. They're thrashing under that hood. A lot of familiarity with Villeneuve and Bill Burns. Of course, Bill Burns was the crew chief for Andrew Ranger in his championship runs. Let's have a look at the Delta Bingo and Gaming starting grid. Kevin Lacroix, of course, is on the pole with Mark Antoine Cameron. LP Dumoulin alongside Andrew Ranger make up row number two. Row number three has Alex Tagliani alongside J.F. Dumoulin. That could be a story in the 04. DJ Kennington drives the 17. He'll start alongside Trayton Lapsovich. Good qualifying effort in row four. Rounding out the top 10, we've got Gary Clute in the 59. Part-timer, the wild card, the 39 of Alice Gannett. Jacques Villeneuve was scheduled to start 11th and a solid qualifying effort for Sam Fellows in 12th. Matthew Kingsbury in the 12th here today and Brandon Watson. Good qualifying effort in the 9. Ray Jr. Cordemage drives the 8. J.P. Bergeron is in the 1. They make up for row number 8. To row 9, we have Dominic St. Cyr alongside Dexter Stacy in the 92. Rounding out that top 20, Larry Jackson in the 84 and L.P. Montour in the 13. Going back one more row to row number 11. That's where we find the 37 of Simon Zion Vienne and Mark Dilly in the 64. Row 12 is Wallace Stacy in the 66 and Glenn Styers in the 0. Rounding out the field today, T.J. Renamato in the two, and Serge Bordeaux, welcome to the series. He'll be behind the wheel of the 55. Couple drivers making their first start. A lot of drivers are very, very familiar with this track as a Greek flag waves and we're on the way here at Tour de Lacroix edges up on Mark Antoine Cameron, but Cameron able to hold position. He'll get the inside of turn number two. Let's see who wins his drag race down into three. Indeed, it is Mark Antoine Cameron. This is the first pinch point of the track. It really is single file. It's double file if you're good friends, but that is a tight area and things needed to be sorted before he got to that point. Turn six, they're coming up on it right now. That's one of the best passing opportunities. You can see Dumoulin take a look on Ranger. That was my favorite camera angle of the season. That shot, watching these cars on the verge of control into that braking zone in turn six. Like you say, it's a famous passing zone, but all these drivers at the front are so very good. You almost have to let the cars wear out a little bit, see who has the best long run setup. What I love about the Grand Prix of Tuatha Gare is the fact that it's held on streets. It is a street course, much the same as the Honda in Toronto, but that means the road does have some character to it. You get some bumps, you have the crowning of the road as well, and there are bumps in that turn six braking zone, which makes it even more of a handle to hang on to. Well, and as you say, they're about to get to it. Nobody would build a racetrack with turn three looking like this. <laughs> Not anymore, that's for sure, because look, you almost have to clip the inside wall at the apex, you let it float out, and nearly click the outside wall on exit, and then you set sail down this long straightaway. Kevin Lacroix on the outside, trying to hold off the GM Pie number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Whoa, that got skinny. Coming off of turn number six, that is a tire barrier, but with, with a surface on it. If it's just rubber tires, it'll suck a car right in. The fact that it's got that plastic surface on it allows the cars to kind of deflect off it a little bit. 
Now you can see the top five settling back in single file through turn number nine. 10 on this 11 turn nearly two and a half kilometer street circuit they'll bounce off the curb in turn number 11 back onto the front chute and cross the start finish line once again that's lap number three as we have a look up the field a little bit you see alex tagliani back a little bit but dj kennington right on his tail this is a huge day in the point standings for kennington after a hugely successful western swing sees him just one point out of the championship lead Car we're watching early on is the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin. Remember, he started in sixth, currently in fifth, so he's only improved by one position, but that is a brand-new sponsor on board as Lacroix locks the tires looking for the lead, and again, that bump in the braking zone is so, so difficult, and now Lacroix's off the pace. He did a nice job keeping that car off the wall, but he's got a problem. More problems. Oh, Sam Fellows. Great 12th place qualifying run, and Fellows will sit there it's hard to shift with your fingers crossed are you sitting there hoping nobody collects them pretty much a blind corner now the corner marshals will be displaying the blue flag we're staying under green though and cameron now with a bit of a gap back to the 27 of andrew ranger well and we talked about dj kennington one point out of the lead cameron in there as well let's ride on board though with sam fellows contact yeah, you can hear it on entrance, and then the engine stalls. He's got to find neutral. Here's what happened to Kevin Lacroix. So that that car had died on Lacroix. He's trying to get it refired. So I'm not sure what would have gone on there. Now, interesting, that team did change engines between practice and qualifying. And so well, it might just oh. be a loose connection as Serge Bordeaux, the 55, hard into the inside wall in turn number one. Significant contact as he sits sideways directly in the racing groove. That's going to bring out our full first full course caution, Dave. Bordeaux, one of seven racers in the field who have never raced in a stock car here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, making his first start in the NASCAR 50 Series. There's another one, Dominic St. Cyr. And the Dagobert VR St. Cyr number three into the tire wall in turn number six. Clearly the thing to do on lap five. Oh boy. Bordeaux didn't have much of a chance there. Things had strung out, gotten wide. And St. Cyr, I don't think he'll be able to make it back into the pits. That's, that's a lot of visibility lost right there. Speaking of the pits, Todd Lewis is standing by with a driver who failed to make even one lap. Jacques, this is about as disappointing a day to not even really get started out here, but good of you to try to muster a smile. Well, it's frustrating. Uh, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a long way to come, and this is a big race. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of effort, sponsors, to, to get this going. Uh, fans came, so, uh, of course, it's very disappointing to not even do a lap, to not get the car going. But it's still nice to be back here at trois -Rivier. Oh, it's great. It's a great event. Uh, you know, there's a great race uh, going. Uh, so at least the fans are getting, you know, a good show the, mostly with the weather we have, so it's, it's great. Enjoy the rest of it with the family. Thank you. He's out of the suit already. He's got the family with him. And there you see the damage to the 55 of Serge Bordeaux, a brand new car out of the McCall Racing Shop. Uh, there is not much left of the front of that machine, but lots of racing still to come. Welcome back. We've continued under caution here at the 52nd running of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Under caution, though, gives an opportunity for some of the leaders to come down pit lane. Gary Clute was the first to pit on lap four, and the 96 is in as well. Cameron headed down pit lane to his crew chief, Robin McCluskey, looking to take on fuel. Obligatory fuel stop for the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron taking place. Fuel is going in. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, who had that earlier issue, also along pit road. Fuel going in. It's a very quick stop. A stab and go, and he's away. The 96 finally leaving pit road. That's a big no-no, Dave. We saw the stop sign for the NASCAR official, and Kevin Lacroix looked like he just blew right past it. Yeah, so the way the rules go here is you have to take fuel before lap 50. That's mandated. You can take tires if you want, but you can't do it on your mandatory fuel stop. Nailed it, Dave. 
Big news for the series announced this weekend here at GP3R with longtime supporter Anthony Spiteri being announced as NASCAR Canada's new general manager. Big news indeed, and the series is in the midst of a big growth spurt. Even NASCAR's chief operating officer, Steve O'Donnell, came to visit. We are happy to welcome Steve O'Donnell from NASCAR here to the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières. Do you have a notepad and maybe taking notes for the Chicago race next year? Yeah, I think this is a phenomenal facility, first of all, a lot of history and, and for us, great to be here with the Pinty Series. Uh, certainly a lot of learnings that we can have, you know, going to Chicago, but uh, a great day for the series as well. We're announcing the new appointment of Tony as our general manager, uh, exciting things to come for the series. That's Tony Spiteri, of course, from Pinty's, who now joins the series, which we're so happy about. And obviously NASCAR and their ongoing support of the series, you feel it's very important to continue the growth in Canada. We really do. Um, you know, the goal for us is to make this the, the Cup Series of Canada. Uh, we've got a long way to go. We got through kind of COVID, um, but have come out on the other end with the support of our car owners and drivers to get us there on the tracks uh, and really feel like we've laid a great foundation uh, to grow the series in the future. Still a lot of work to do, uh, but with Tony's leadership and the good team, I, I think the sky's the limit for us. We've had great partners this year, and our car counts continue to increase as well. These are all positive signs. Really positive. You look around the garage area here, just the quality of the teams, the look and feel, and the quality of the drivers. You know, we've got veteran drivers, and we've got a lot of new young drivers coming up through the series, and that's great for us. It's our job now to manage that uh, and manage it within Canada. I think it was important for us to say we're going to be here. We're going to be here for the long term with Canadian leadership uh, and really grow the series. Welcome, Steve. Glad to have you. Thank you very much. And these racers, drivers, car owners, they all puff their chest out a little bit when someone like Steve O'Donnell comes to town. You'll notice the 74 of Kevin Lacroix all the way to the back. That's his penalty for blowing through the stop sign after his pit stop. Look at this dice at the front, though. The 04 of J.F. Dumoulin up on the outside looking for a share of the lead. He won't have it going in through three, but they're two brothers side by side so they can make it through there. You, you talked about him a little bit earlier. The problem J.F. Dumoulin always had in the series was not qualifying well. And he always had to use up a lot of race car to get to the front of the field. Today he qualified in the top five. I don't know that we have anyone in the series who is better on old tires than J.F. Dumoulin. He's finished fourth, third, and second in the last three races here. Can he make it 4-3-2-1 by winning today? Good ride on board with Matthew Kingsbury as you take a look at Mark Antoine Cameron or Andrew Ranger, I should say, continuing to lead in the GM Pie number 27. Nearly identical cars to the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Yeah, if you just glance at them quickly, you really can't tell the difference. Of course, they have not made their mandatory pit stop for fuel just yet, so they'll take their turn out in front. And we'll look deeper in the field to see how Cameron and Lacroix are doing, making it back through the field. And Gary Clute as well, the first driver to have pitted. Keep an eye on that blue and white number 18 of Alex Tagliani. Coming off a win in one of the twin 125s in Saskatoon. And he comes into this race with six podium finishes. And he's on a high as we look for this battle for the lead going into turn number six. Oh, this one's over before we even get to the braking zone. Andrew Ranger essentially points him by. Ranger back to second. We saw him do this in Toronto. It didn't work out well for him in Toronto. He never did get the opportunity to challenge Lacroix for the lead again. But J.F. Doomling going to get out front and lead some laps. We can't express how important this event is to the Dumoulin family in their hometown, one of the most famous races in the country of Canada. Let's head down pit side where Todd is standing by with a driver who failed to finish this one, Todd. Serge, we're sorry to see you out early. Take me through what happened out on course, but we're glad you're okay. Yeah, because uh, when I, I, take, I take my mind to get slowly, I want to go faster, but I think I wait, I wait, I wait. But one side in my brain, okay, slowly, and then I side push, push, push. When I, I go, I push a lot, and the one I pass one and two, now I try to pass inside the, 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 the one car. But uh, one guy touched the car, touched me, but uh, she has maybe another uh, two couple of seconds, and I pass right away. But the experience, but uh, I know I want to push the pedal, I can't stop. All the time I want to push, push, push. Uh, now I think I, I like this. It's the first time I make the NASCAR, but I very appreciate it. It's very sharp, the team, everything is very sharp. Thanks, sir. Thank you. 
That might be my favorite interview ever. <laughs> push, push, push. You know what he's going to do next time he races uh, with the series at iCars, where we're expecting the 55 for his next stop. And, you know, he makes a very important point. It's not as easy as just going faster. It's the driver who slows down the best who often does the best as we're on pit road. The 92 of Dexter Stacy down pit lane. The engine is still running. As he finds his stall and to the attention of his crew. As the caution comes out, while the 92 bully struck stop, Chevy is on pit lane. So that was his scheduled stop. And it's his teammate in the 66 who's involved in a big one with the zero of Glenn Steyer. Why do these two keep finding each other on the racetrack? I mean, we've seen it a few times this season. It happened at our most recent race in Saskatoon. And this is a big one. Let's have a look at this replay. Steyer spins out. It's turn number nine. And there is Stacy. Looks like he just couldn't get down in time. And the two cars make heavy contact. Look at the fluid leaking out. The fact that Stacy was right in behind TJ Renamato, he might not have seen until TJ turned into the corner that Stires was there backwards. But regardless, what a mess right in the apex of that turn. It is a blind corner, too, so that might be another uh, variable in there. So you can see both cars very torn up. This is going to be a lengthy cleanup. It very well may be. What a mess down there as we see Jamie Hackinson and Jason Hathaway chatting about things and oof. Now you can see the eight of Ray Jr. Cordemos managed to sneak through underneath, but mid lane is open and look at how busy it is at the top of your screen. And what a huge break for Dexter Stacy. He is ahead of all these cars who made their stops now. Fuel stop happening for LP Dumoulin. Car going along pit road. Fuel. The 18 leaves ahead of him, but he's got his fuel can stuck in it. He stops at the end of pit road, and now everybody's dancing around him. The 17 is also waiting to leave. And I think we just had another car blow the stop sign. Two of them, as a matter of fact, both Dumoulin's the 47 and the 04 blow through the stop sign at the end of pit lane. For one, you've got to be able to see that stop sign. You have to know where the official is. But for another, the crew chief and the spotter have to catch that as well. Let's see how this shakes out, Dave. Well, after a challenging pit stop the first time for fuel, where Alex Tagliani left with the gas can still attached to the car and was penalized at the back, the team has shaken up their strategy. They've got four fresh general tires. They've got two on the right side already, and they've got two fresh ones going on the left side now. Alex Tagliani is going to be back in the pack, but he is going to have the freshest rubber in the field. It probably won't make a huge difference, Dave, but every little bit counts. And obviously, he's behind a lot of cars he wants to be ahead of. So that rubber is going to come to good use. And that's a new option for 2022 here at GP3R. Teams are now allowed to choose whether or not they want to put on four new tires. And we'll see how it plays out. It's a strategy call by 18's crew chief, Scott Steckley, of course, a member of the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. But look now. It's Alex Gannett in the 39 who will challenge the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron for top spot as they head to turn number one on this restart. Gary Clute, who was the first car to pit, is going to restart third. And Sam Fellows up in row number two as well. On board with the blue, yellow, and white number 74, the Napa Auto Port Parts entry of Kevin Lacroix. Now we ride on board with Mark Antoine Cameron to turn one. Quickly grabs those gears. Look at Dexter Stacy way up the inside as we got one smoke in the brakes. I didn't see who that was. Might have been Gannett going into turn one. Single file for the top five now, really, as we work through turn number two. Now everybody single file into turn number three. Look at the number 98. Remember, not too many laps ago, he was backwards in the wall in turn number six. Yeah, impressive the way they've bounced back, but again, being backwards in the in the corner there in turn six, forced their hand. They pitted early for fuel. That works out well for track position, but Dexter Stacy looking to the inside, couldn't do it there in turn six. So much jockeying for position in that heavy break zone. Coming into turn number eight, there's an opportunity for passing there too. It is more of a momentum corner. You have that big runoff area that's painted green, and then you can also pass here in turn number nine if you're daring enough. 
you know, the passing zones really depend what part of the race you're in. Sure. In the last couple yeah. of laps, any of the corners will do. In the early part of the race, you've got turn one, turn six, turn eight. Those are the typical spots where they're going to give it a try. Lacroix now looking to the inside of the 92 of Dexter Stacy as the top three open a bit of a gap now on the Holly Sleep number 98 of Sam Fellows, brand new sponsor on board for this weekend. Always exciting when new companies get involved as we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. A wide grip he keeps on the steering wheel as he'll look to the inside of Dexter Stacy on this long straightaway and try to outbreak him into turn six. Into that braking zone, they're side by side. Dexter has to give him the room and stick it into the top five for the number 74 off Kevin Lacroix. Remember, he's won twice here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, so he knows a quick way around or two. If it's a road course, he's won on it. Well, yeah, he's won both of them so far here in 2022 as well as he sits atop the point standings. Beautiful looking race car as well. It'll take a little bit of getting used to not seeing him in the familiar red and black and white, but that is a beautiful race car. And I see a black flag at the corner of my eye. That is for the old four of JF Dumoulin. Black flag for not going to the tail of the field for blowing through that stop and go sign. So a drive through pit stop awaits the old four team. Something we had mentioned just before the commercial break. These teams all have spotters on the radio to talk to the driver. They've also got crew chiefs. Those are things between the three of them, the driver, the crew chief, and the spotter, they have got to be on top of that. Love hearing the downshift into turn number six. You see Lacroix closed up on the back bumper of the 98 of San Fellows. There you saw a quick look of the 04 of JF Dumoulin. So that's where he's going to be pulled into the pits from inside the top 10, and that's going to hurt. Well, and we need to look at where his brother LP is because LP did go to the back of the field. So we'll see the difference. That's how much ground he made up as JF heads into the pits. Just ahead of the one of JP Bergeron, the Dave Jacobs prepared Ford Mustang and slowly that pit road speed limit for the 04 Dumoulin. He'll go down pit road where it makes a curve, head back onto the racetrack, losing a lot of track position and equally as important, being behind all of that traffic as we look back again at Mark Antoine Cameron. Alice Gannett chasing him. He's got a pretty impressive voice in his ear this weekend, Dave. Uh, he is Alex LeBay, former NASCAR Pinty Series champion, current competitor in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, helping him out here this weekend. Of course, Alex LeBay won his championship for Dave Jacobs Racing, who currently owns the 39. We went down through the gears and kicked it sideways off of turn six with Sam Fellows in the 98. Some doings. The exhaust pipe on the 59 seems to be hanging out on that new Techwood Dodge. Doesn't appear to be slowing him down, but you can see it's, it appears to be an exhaust pipe. Yeah, it is. Sticking out the side of the body. Isn't that something? Not something you see every day, but Gary Clute. Doesn't seem to be slowing him down at all as we ride with Kevin Lacroix, who is trying to chase down the 98 of Sam Fellows. Now, this has to be one of the confidence-building races for that 98 team, a race that he really needed. Remember, he was in the mix for a little bit uh, on the streets in Toronto, thought he had a really good race going there. Unfortunate on the last restart, lost several positions, but here he is right in the mix once again. You know, Sam is learning. Every time we go to these racetracks, he's picking up some new tips. He's being hounded by one of the most successful racers this series has ever had. And, of course, on the radio spotting for him is his father, Ron Fellows. So it's got to be difficult. I'm a proud father, Dave. You're a proud father. How much do you listen to your dad when it comes to <laughs> anything? When you're a member of the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame, though, your hammer swings a little heavier for sure <laughs> i don't know if it makes a difference it's still dad yeah, and i right. want to hear it from somebody else but I, I mean an impressive voice ron fellows has been there and done it all a look back up front mark antoine cameron and the 96 continues to lead here in 20 yeah. Welcome back to race number nine of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series here on TSN. We're in the midst of the Russo Medals 60 as we ride on board with your race leader, the 96, Mark Antoine Cameron. 
Hasn't been able to open a very big gap over Alex Gannett in the second spot, Gary Clute in the third spot. There were years Gary Clute was cursed here at this event. You saw the nose of a Dodge Challenger, a green nose. That was not DJ Kennington. That was Simone Diovien, and now the 74-year points leader pulls into a runoff area in turn number two. The window net's going down. There is no sound coming from that race car. Kevin Lacroix obviously knows something's amiss. Todd is on the scene. Yeah, guys, just getting the word from the team that 74 is stopped out on course. They have a motor problem. They had one during practice. They made the switch before qualifying, but now have seemed to have problems again. Donnie, this is a, what a frustrating way for this to end for you. Your team has been fast, especially on the road courses. What happened? Well, I didn't hear what you said, Todd, but we broke a motor. Uh, yeah, it's a shame the Napa car was really good today. Thanks, Donnie. Yeah, frustrated Kevin Lacroix. And it, he continues, to, it's either feast or famine here at the GP3R for Kevin Lacroix. He's had as many DNFs as he's had podiums here at this race. You know, over the years, Kevin Lacroix has really learned how to take the highs with the lows. But unfortunately, it's because he has really had to deal with a lot of highs and lows. It's... Uh, Man, oh man, tough way to end that day for a driver who was battling out front, an exciting new sponsor announcement, and to see him pull those belts up. Yeah. Dejection in his face, but it's almost, he knows it can happen at any time. We continue under green, though, because he did pull off into a runoff area. Good battle now. You can see the 47 starting to work his way up through the field. Remember, the 18 of Alex Tagliani has brand-new General Tires, one of the only drivers as smoke from the other Castrol Dodge of Simone Dion Vienne, the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington, just behind. Yeah, that is not a healthy-looking 37 Castrol machine of Dion Vienne as he'll be overtaken by Kennington, Tagliani, Dumoulin. It looked like he was trying to get to pit lane, but that convoy of vehicles sort of lined up to his inside, so he's still showing smoke. As those drivers still on the lead lap goes by, Dion Vienne is a couple laps down last time he crossed the stripe, and here comes Tag to the inside. Wow! Did he ever fire it up the inside in that 18 machine, making a move on DJ Kennington? Move Tagliani up to the seventh position. Again, the Tagliani won it the last time we were here in 2021. A COVID altered race here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. It was great to have the feeling back of the original Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières back once again this year. The fans have come out in droves. Oh, they certainly have a little bit of lightning, a little bit of rain. I couldn't <laughs> keep them away, Dave. No, it didn't dampen their spirits one bit. As you see this three-car train, the leader still out front. Look, the 12 into that tire wall in turn number six. Wow, just about got collected, and that's a terrible spot that Matthew Kingsbury is in because the drivers can't see that exit to the turn until they get right into the corner. He manages to find reverse and back up. He'll continue on. Look, just outside of the apex, caught the outside of the concrete. It's pretty slick out there. And there was a lot of traffic down there. In fact, it looked as though Trayton Lapsevich, who saw what was going on, must have slowed down a little bit more. Simone Dion Vienne involved. Let's ride on board. And it's a pretty solid hit for that Dura King Dodge. And Matthew Kingsbury driving his very first road course race here in the NASCAR Pinty Series, hoping to string together maybe a full-time ride in 2023. GP3R is an unforgiving yeah, racetrack. Is. This, is, this is a tough place to cut your road racing teeth. on board with one of the best though in LP Dumoulin. So comfortable here on the streets of Tuatha Vieira. A race that he grew up watching from the grandstands and he said one day I will I will be in this race. Not only that, he's won it. He's won just about everything there is to win in this series as he's chasing Alex Tagliani, another driver who's won a lot of things but not the championship Dave. And now he moves back to the inside of the 18. These two cars have really been dicing it out for the last several laps. They've left DJ Kennington behind just a little bit as they're looking at the back end 
of the Prolon Russo number one of J.P. Bergeron's having a really a quietly good day. Two Dave Jacobs racing cars inside the top ten. That describes J.P. Bergeron perfectly. He is, he races quietly. He's not spectacular out there, but he's very solid. He hits his marks. I haven't seen him make an awful lot of mistakes this year, Dave. He's had about four road course races to his career. Uh, one of them being the Chevrolet Urban Challenge in a dirt modified last night here at Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, which uh, was a, a race mired by cautions. But uh, he said, you know what, anytime you're on the track, you learn something. Absolutely. And he also does a lot of eye racing. Sim racing is a big thing for J.P. Bergeron. And although nothing replicates being in one of these hot, powerful race cars, the simulators are a great thing. You just saw a quick glimpse of the top three. They're able to stretch a bit of a gap now over Sam Fellows in fourth spot. He's nearly six seconds behind the race leader as the top three are very much in check with one another as these three drivers have now strung up together. It's Bergeron, Dumoulin, and Tagliani all in line with Kennington not far behind. At this point in this race, Dave, if I'm Sam Fellows, I don't care if I'm six seconds back or not. If I'm in my own piece of racetrack, I'm happy. Traditionally, this race is going to have at least one more yellow, maybe two more yellows. So why worry about pushing yourself to keep pace? Just settle in, get comfortable, save something for later. These are the drivers that are really having to make advances because they don't have track position. Look at Bergeron up on the outside, holding off a challenge from the three-time series champion. L.V. Dumoulin thought he had him in turn number one. Now he's going to be in a bad position here on the outside in three. Bergeron's going to stick it in there. And Bergeron left him a lot of racetrack. I mean, that's what we were talking about, a very sportsmanlike racer, very, very heady. He's always thinking, at least that's what it looks like. But... I don't think he planned this, but he opened the door for Alex Tagliani to mount a challenge and give himself a bit of a break. An opportunity presents itself. Alex Tagliani in the Viagra St. Hubert number 18 says, thank you very much. I will take that one to a relatively easy pass on the inside of turn six. And now he will give up chase on the number one of Bergeron. It was fun to watch as now Tagliani dives down to the inside to make that pass. LP Dumoulin going to follow him through as well. J.P. Bergeron gets back in line before Kennington can take advantage also. And there we talked about turn number nine being a possible passing opportunity. The one wiggled just a little bit on corner exit in turn number eight. That opened the door. Tag and Dumoulin both went through experienced street racers. Only on the gas for about a second and a half between turns two and three. And then this long straightaway as we see Gary Clute closing in on Alex Gannett. They're still within striking distance of Cameron, but Clute is pretty close on the back end of Gannett in that battle for the second spot. I think he's happy being there. One driver who's not happy where he is is standing by in pit lane. Trouble for him early on. Todd, what's up? Problem with the 92 along pit road. The crew's got the right side of the car up and they're getting that right front tire off. They believe they have an oil leak underneath. Now they're going to try and find it, maybe make repairs quickly for Dexter Stacy. Speed has not been a problem this year for Dexter Stacy. That 92 machine has been quick. The bully's truck stop entry, whether it's an oval or a road course, he's had lots of speed. The challenge has been making it to the end of the races. Finish on the podium at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as we hit the halfway mark here on the streets of Trois-Rivières. Your race leader continues to be the number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Welcome back to the streets of Trois-Rivières where things have sort of settled down just a little bit. We're in the midst of a long green flag run. This is a battle a little bit deeper inside the top 10 between Alex Tagliani and the 47 of LP Dumoulin. We've been watching the front trio start to stretch away ahead of the 98 of Sam Fellows. Yeah, this is the part of the race, Dave, where, where that's what these drivers are going to do. In fact, LP Dumoulin 
keeping the pressure on Alex Tagliani, but they're both making gains on the cars in front of them. That's what's important right now. In the back of your mind, you're thinking we're going to get another yellow. A little bit further back in your mind, you're thinking, what if we don't get that yellow? we got to go a little bit quicker. Well, you can see Ranger, who is in fifth position, has come into view of the 18 as they work their way down that straightaway. So I think it's benefiting both these drivers once they sort of settle things out amongst themselves. They're going to follow each other single file and start making fast laps. All part of the master plan. Look at the focus in the eyes of LP Dumoulin. And look at the forces inside that race car. You accelerate, it pushes his head back into the headrest, slows down, and there's a whiplash effect. You can watch those very active hands, too, on the steering wheel. It's a slippery track. You've got the concrete patches on the inside, some older patches of asphalt, and some new ones mixed in, too. Couple of young drivers, a sophomore driver in Trayton Lapsovich, a rookie racer in Brandon Watson in that number nine machine. Both of them having solid runs out there. Well on the lead lap, they run right behind the two of TJ Renamato. A little bit of body damage at the back of Renamato. 11 and 12 for the 20 and nine. But one driver, as we mentioned, who is having a very, very good run here up towards the front of the field is the 98 of Sam Fellows. John? That's Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer Ron Fellows coaching his son Sam on the radio who is having a sensational run. This is a team that had struggles earlier in the year. They made the decision not to go on the western swing. They wanted to regroup. They did some testing and Sam told me that they did learn some things that they thought would help them. It is certainly helping them out here today. They have big opportunities ahead as well. Icar on the calendar coming up as well. Sam's home track at CTMP. It's another one that he has circled on his calendar. He would love to do well there. You want to talk about the history of this race team or on this race team. Ron Fellows is the spotter. Sam Fellows, let's put him to the side just for a moment because we've got a lot more decades with Ron Fellows and, of course, Jim Bray, who brings the cars to the racetrack. The oldest licensed pilot in Canada, Dave. At 89 years young and not slowing down one bit. Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer. So is Ron Fellows. In fact, unofficially, is that the only team in the series with two Hall of Famers on it? I think it might be. Maybe Alex Tagliani and, and Scott Stackley. Stackley. That's yep. another one, too. So, yeah, we're filled with uh, deep talent. Of course, Mike Knott on that team as well, turning wrenches on the 98. So a depth of talent in the Canadian racing scene on that 98 crew. Crew chief slash farmer Mike Knott. <laughs> a fascinating story. If you, you go hang out with that 98, anybody you talk to on that team will be able to tell you a fun story. Quick ride on board with LP Dumoulin as he continues to look at that back bumper cover of the Chevrolet in front of him. He's read Viagra about 15 times in a row because that's where he's been each of the last about 15 laps. L.P. Dumoulin just trailing the 18 as they continue to close the gap on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. They're coming. A couple of great Quebec racers doing battle. And while we're on the topic of Quebec, Dave, let's talk about some somber news. Our condolences to the family of Claude Aubin, uh, famous at Saint Oust Autodrome St. Eustache. Longtime promoter there who just passed away and uh, sad to hear that. Yeah, very much so as a face we got used to seeing here in the NASCAR Pinty series when we used to make stops at Autodrome St. Estache and definitely sad news to hear that he had passed away. More than the face, it was the mustache we got <laughs> used to seeing Classic. as well. Classic mustache. And there you can see DJ Kennington at the top of your screen. So everybody has really settled out in this race. Sure, they're close on track. But nobody's really willing to gamble just yet because we still have 22 laps left in this one. Still way too early to show your hand. Uh, this racetrack and this race is very hard on brakes. There, there's a lot of sections on the track where you're using a lot of brake pedal. For that reason, these drivers know the last five laps is where you're going to make your money. You just have to be in position. So even though Alex Tagliani is barely holding off LP Dumoulin, he's not racing at 100% right now. No, they're saving some stuff towards the end as they head through the Duplessis Gates. Uh, most famous turn here in Trois-Rivières, Quebec. One of the most picturesque corners in Canadian motorsport for sure as they head down that straightaway, which is actually a series of a couple corners on this 11-turn street circuit. And Dumoulin taking a look. Maybe he says it's time to go. 
He could be trying to make a move. He could be trying to force tag the ante into a mistake. He could also just be trying to get some fresh, hot, twenty year air into that radiator. You said it. It is hot, and it continues to be hot. Even with that rainstorm passing through earlier on today, it has been so hot and muggy here for the entire three-day festival weekend, and it's got to be stifling inside those race cars. This is where fitness comes into play, and there is not a driver in the series more physically fit than LP Dumlin, although Alex Tagliani as well. If we, if we want to talk fitness, let's go back to our second place competitor. Alex Gannett is probably the most physically fit of anybody in the field. Saw a quick glimpse of the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He's won here four times. But it's been years since he's visited Victory Lane, although he does have one of the best average finishes of all drivers because he's finished second here seven times, believe it or not, an average finish of 4.3. There was a number of years where if Andrew didn't finish second, he won. Yeah. Like there was a number of years where his worst finish was second place. And of course he had that ultra famous finish at the line with Kerry Mix with the 27 that was back when he was driving a Ford Fusion with Tide sponsorship climbing on the hood of Kerry Mix it's just epic and I mean that was in pictures and video for years and years that's how the series began that was 2007 builds the interest in the series for sure and drivers like LP Dumoulin like Alex Tagliani have continued to build on those foundations and bring the interest and Again, we mentioned off the top of the show, the car counts have been growing here in 2022. There's already a buzz for 2023. I mean, the series is on the right trajectory. We have more teams racing full-time this year than ever in the history of the series, and a lot of interested parties coming on board. And to hear Tony Spateri coming on board, there's just a lot of things happening that, that are giving crazy positive momentum. And of course, the next race will be the first time ever we'll see the NASCAR Pinty Series on dirt for the Pinty's 100 at Oshweekin Speedway, and that's going to be exciting. Ah, I am so excited for that event. Of course, I mean, I work there every Friday night, Dave. That's that's home track. That's ground zero Grew up for there, our really. racing. Yeah, it's it's just can't wait for the series to come and all the fans who have never seen it before never been there before it's just going to be a lot of fun leaders working through lap traffic you saw the 64 leland chevy of mark dilly pulled to the inside it cost gary clued a little bit of space on the track gannett and cameron able to get through but you can see a little bit of a gap back to the new techwood number 59 as last time across the stripe the, the distance to the leader was about three seconds for all the laps we've run under green Alex Gannett is back by 1.2 seconds so he's only about a tenth of a second slower than Mark Antoine Cameron which is basically keeping pace with the leader keeping him in his sights 19 laps to go is a long time but look at this the top three starting to close in just a little bit again Let's talk about Alex Gannett sitting in second spot. We expect to see Mark Antoine Cameron at the front. We expect to see Gary Clute there in the 59 as well. He had a win taken from him in the final turn at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park earlier this year. Gannett, his best finish here at the Grand Prix to 20 here is only seventh, and it came way back in 2014. You know, he came on the scene like gangbusters. It almost seemed like he was going to go the way Alex LeBay did into the series, through the series, go down south and go racing. And then th things kind of quieted down, and he went to a part-time schedule. Didn't take away any of his talent. But when he's come back, I've never seen him more confident. I've never seen him more poised than what we see him lately at the racetrack. And you can see in the eBay Motors ticker on the side of your screen that the space has completely vanished now between Fellows and Rangers. The 27 is all over the back bumper of that AER number 98. And the 47 is there to Dilly into that same runoff area in turn number two. Yeah, they're starting to run out of space down there in the turn two runoff area as we ride on board, split screen with Andrew Ranger in that 27 right behind Sam Fellows. And if you look in his mirror, no, you still can't see the 47 behind him, but he's there. Well, this has to be concerning with so many drivers starting to fall out of this race with mechanical issues. Again, the weather plays a factor, but when you're at the front of the field, are you thinking, is my turn next? 
Dave, I think there's a lot of that, but more so when you've got a teammate out there. Like if you're Brandon Watson, driver of the number nine, and you see Mark Dilley in a runoff area, that's your teammate. You've got basically identically prepared race cars. Then you would wonder, is mine going to last? Well, the thing about Sam Fellows right now is he's had clean air going into the front of that car, so it's able to cool the brakes a little bit better, able to keep the engine a little bit cooler as well. Now you have the 27 right up underneath the back bumper, and that does affect the overall car temperature. Well, and it affects your mindset as well. I'll tell you what, if you're Sam Fellows, the best thing you can do right now is let Andrew Ranger and LP Dumoulin buy him, go to school. He's not going to because he's young and competitive. Is he? Ranger's gonna get by. <laughs> But this could be the best thing to happen to Sam Fellows. He was out there in clean air doing a great job. Now you're out there in clean air with six championships ahead of you. See what they do, watch what they do, run with these drivers, and between the coaching his dad's giving him and the on-track experience he's getting right now, Sam Fellows is about to, to learn some great, great things about NASCAR Pinty Series racing. Now he's just made the jump from high school to college. You saw the 12 of Matthew Kingsbury off the pace over on the left-hand side of the track through turn number 10, away from the leaders, but the 12 is slowing once again, you can see him at the top of your screen off turn 11, and it's a long way back to pit lane. Yeah, he missed the entrance of pit road. It is a long way back, and I'm watching there, even right there, coming down into turn number one, Sam Fellow's line was about two feet different than LP Dumlin as we go full course yellow. That is for the 12, Matthew Kingsbury, who has slowed onto the front straightaway. So this is going to close this field back up after the top three had opened up nearly a 15 second gap on fourth place. That's how they go in this kind of racing. Yellow flag will bunch it all up. We're on board with Matthew Kingsbury. I, I He must have backed in the wrong end of pit road. Looks like he did. That's Gloria Ang, the NASCAR official on board with Matthew Kingsbury. She can't hold up the stop sign and tell him to go with the other hand. It's conflicted messages. <laughs> trying to push him back into the paddock area. That's where the opening is right there. So it looks like Matthew Kingsbury in the 12. His afternoon is done just a little bit early, but this is going to shake things up for sure. When we return, we'll take you to another restart. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's pit side. Todd? Guys, the strangest pit stop ever for the 17 team. They came along pit road to get four fresh tires because the cars around them had fresher rubber. They were halted halfway through because NASCAR threw the red flag to correct an issue. The pit stop was halted because of the red flag. They've now changed the two left side tires. They're going to make sure the right side is good and send the 17 back out. Just when you think you've seen it all. <laughs> this race just keeps dealing a new wild card for sure for DJ Kennington. At least the team didn't have to thrash too much, but uh, we'll lose that considerable track position. And he's got new tires. Well, fresh rubber after that long green flag run, that will make a difference out there. And we've got to have a look at how many cars are still on the lead lap, Dave. That's where DJ Kennington will restart as we ride on board with LP Montour, who started in the 20th spot currently 13th in the Kamloops sponsored number 13. You can see a little bit of drizzle on the front windshield of the 13, but you can see, look, at Ray Cordemanche Jr. in the 8s and Larry Jackson in the O'Neill Electric number 84. They're both having great runs here today. And, and there's one driver in particular who really needs a good run in that O'Neill Electric number 84. It's Larry Jackson. Let's go back on board with our race leader, Mark Antoine Camera. In fact, let's sit right in the passenger seat, Dave. Well, the pace car is in. Cameron's going to slowly bring them through turn number 10. You can see the field bunching up in behind. You can see the number of cars missing there as attrition really has taken hold in the final half of this race. The green flag is up once again. DJ Kennington all the way at the back of that long train of race cars. Cameron gets a great launch into turn number one. Looks like Gannett's going to hang on to second. Oh, contact between Clute and Andrew Ranger. In through turn number two, Ranger's fighting the wheel down into turn number three. 
as Cliff gets into the back of the 27, into the wall goes Ranger. Wow, Brandon Watson, LP Montour narrowly avoid. Andrew Ranger gets that car refired, but there's some pieces left over there in turn number three. Gary Clute still stopped there in turn three. I want to see that again, Dave. There was a lot going on between turn two and turn three as Andrew Ranger doing a little strip show down the straightaway. And that debris is going to bring out the full course caution. You can see the contact, but it looks like the 59 may have had help into the 27. And you can see the back bumper of the 59 caved in. Look all the way back. Tagliani into the back of J.F. Dumoulin, into the back of Gary Clute. You don't know who's driving. Is that train being driven from the front or from the back? It's hard to say. A heavy hit for the 27 GM Paye Chevrolet of Andrew Ranger. The 98 of Sam Fellows narrowly avoided the nose of the 27 as Ranger has to get a new deck lid put on. NASCAR rules say the car must have a rear spoiler, so it must have a rear deck lid. They borrowed one from Glenn's <laughs> tires. The back end of the zero wasn't beat up, so they get that and put it on the 27. Look, tires for the 59 of Gary Klutz. And we look at the damage on the back bumper of Clute, a telling tale of what just went on. There's more to come. Mark Antoine Cameron has visited Victory Lane twice so far in 2022. He's yet to do it on a road or street circuit. Both those wins coming on ovals this year, but he's been leading a lot of laps here at the Grand Prix to 20 here. Now it's six to go. Pretty much everybody on the racetrack, Dave, is still on the lead lap. We saw Andrew Ranger and Gary Clute both made repairs. They're back out in the race. And look at L.P. Dumoulin taking Alex Kinnett all the way up to the wall on the outside of the exit of turn one. Who's going to win the race into three? Gannett's not going to give going into three. He's going to stick it down the inside. That puts Dumoulin way up on the outside, and he's not going to gain a spot. He's going to lose one to his brother, J.F. And neither of those drivers would have got a great launch off of that corner. Alex Gannett's got to be careful. He might be under attack from J.F. Dumoulin as he gets up into the racing line down into turn six. Look at some of the drivers at the front of the field. You have J.F. Dumoulin, who's never won in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You have the 39 of Alex Gannett, who's never won in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The 47 LP hasn't won yet this year. How about Sam Fellows in the 98, who's never had a top five in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but here here goes Alex Gannett applying the pressure. A little bit of raindrop on the camera screen. Now the good news is there's a tremendous amount of heat in the asphalt here in Poitiers. So that's keeping the racing line fairly dry. Five laps to go and Gannett takes a look to the inside. Oh, they rough each other up a little bit. Gannett was there on the inside camera and slams the door shut. Talked about it earlier, the winningest driver in the history of this event, but he has never won an NASCAR Penny Series race here at the Grand Prix de trois Rivières. Gannett's going to come back strong in turn number three. He was trailing going into turn number two on the 04, and the Moto Limite number 39 goes back to second. We're, these are, there is a lot of reckless lane changing going on. We saw it with Cameron blocking Gannett. We saw it with Gannett getting into the back of Cameron. Here's JF into the back of Gannett, who had just Cut off his brother LP Dumoulin making contact at the exit of turn three. It's bumper cars. You saw a couple fingers come out the window of the Moto Limite number 39 in response to that bump in turn number six. Gannett none too happy with the driving of the 04. Bump and runs are part of the sport as JF Dumoulin to the inside of Alice Gannett. But there's a difference between a bump and run and, and just blatantly cutting someone off that kind of contact. Blatantly cutting someone off, Dave leads to more vengeful paybacks. Well, that time, the 04 just muscled his way into second spot, but Gannett not happy to run third. He's back up to second in turn number one. He's just going to send it. Oh, oh, is he ever. And now the 47 is just sort of hanging back, waiting for something to happen. Remember, he came into this race fourth in points, so he's very much back in the mix. So he has big picture racing to think about. Mark Antoine Cameron out in front was third in points, so LP is going to lose points to him, but if they finish this way, but Kevin Lacroix being out of the race, DJ Kennington being behind him is a very big deal. You can see the gap at the front starting to get a little bit bigger as these two battle for second spot, and by battle, we mean 
They're going at it pretty hard, Gannett and the 04 of Dumoulin. The gloves are off. They're doing a great job as Gannett just really went through that corner, used up a lot of runoff area. That allows J.F. Dumoulin to the inside. He's going to make the pass. Brother LP looking to do it as well. LP's going to be on the outside in turn number 10. It's not a great place to make that pass. But the 04 brought a brand new sponsor into this race in Casino Grand Royale Wallenack is given those people a great show here today. Through all that battling with Gannett, Dumoulin was four tenths of a second faster than Cameron that lap. And you know who's laying in wait just behind? Alex Tagliani, the 18. Remember, he won here last year. He's been on the podium six straight times. So he's going to be a factor. The way this racing is going, you've got to open up to those drivers running fifth and further back, Tagliani, J.P. Bergeron, D.J. Kennington. Anything can happen at the front of this field, and I have a feeling, Dave, the way it's going, anything may very well happen. L.P. Dumoulin now making that pass stick on the inside of turn number six. You remember the 59 of Gary Clute, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, Kennington, and Lapsovich. They all have new general tires compared to the leaders. What they don't have is the lead built up that our top three or four drivers have. And J.F. Dumoulin is closing the gap on Mark Antoine Cameron. It's going to be two laps to go this time, but he is just about there. Oh, he is coming for sure. Less than three tenths of a second as they cross this stripe in through one and two. And look at Dumoulin stick it. The 96 is all kinds of crossways. Off of turn number one, that allows the 04 to close even more. He was seven tenths of a second faster that lap than the leader. That's unheard of. That doesn't happen. Not at this stage in the game. That is for sure. The Weather Tech Don still holding down third as Gannett and Tagliani round out the top five. Battle for the lead into turn number six. The 04 of J.F. Dumoulin to the inside. J.F. Dumoulin makes the pass on the inside. New race leader here with a lap and a half to go. Look at him driving off of turn number six all the way out to the wall. Now into turn number eight. And look at the gap that the 04 has already built up. Or has he? Where did it go? He drove away by six or eight car lengths. Now Cameron is closed all the way back in. And to the back bumper, a bump in turn number nine, the 96 to the inside. Contact with the 04. Oh, no, cut. Oh, my goodness. Dumoulin into Dumoulin. Two brothers collide in turn number nine, and this will draw the caution. We were going to come to the white flag. Caution is out. So this will set up a green-white checker. A bump and run is one thing. Cutting off someone else who's got their nose there is another, and I think that's what we saw. There's the bump and run, and... I don't think Cameron turned him. It looked like the 04 was coming back. That's he didn't right. realize he was there. That's what I mean. The bump and run happened. Cameron, it led him to get a good launch to the racing line. Let's ride on board here with LP. Have a listen. That's into the inside wall in turn number 10 for the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. That's a pretty hard hit. JF Dumoulin is out. Frustrated, visibly upset as JF Dumoulin. And the crowd showing their appreciation, Dave. So we're going to get this mess cleaned up. Here at the Grand Prix de 20 Bear, we'll be back for a green white checker finish. Welcome back to a street race that has definitely turned into a street fight here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. -de the Russo Metal 60 presented by Julia Wines, and we're set for a green-white checker. Gannett and Mark Antoine Cameron, we're back to green. This could be destiny for Alex Gannett looking for victory. He locked up the front tire going into the turn. Cameron with a problem as well. You saw sparks from the left front corner of the 96. Tagliani is up on the outside and the 18 more problems. This is the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Again with Gary Clute in the 59. Ranger gets that, or Clute gets that car spun around. Ranger is still parked backwards. And now he takes, my goodness, what is coming off that car? Is he everything and the kitchen sink is shedding but ranger's gonna get to that runoff area so we're gonna stay green my goodness that car is a mess but out in front alex Gannett with the race lead will try to hold off cameron who was making all sorts of sparks down into turn one lots of jockeying back further in the pack but 
The gap in the front has built up. Look at Kennington now looking for a podium position as he battles with the Viagra number 18 of Alex Tagliani. There is barely a mark on Tagliani's 18 or the 17 of DJ Kennington. Masterful drive by both of these drivers as the white flag is displayed by Mike Chere. Problems on the left front corner for the 96 of Cameron. You can see it looks to be a tire down as he drags it going in through to turn number one. That's one of only two right-handers, so he's going to try and hang on to it. Alex Tagliani's on the wrong side of the racetrack. DJ Kennington with a win here at GP3R, not battling for that top spot, but he'd love to get back on the podium. That one came way back in 2013, but the old veteran showing he's got some young chops left in him right now as he and Tagliani go side by side into turn number six. Both wiggle under braking. Right behind them is Trey Zulapsevich in the 20. Kennington going to clear the 18 of Tagliani on the exit of turn number six. A huge lead built up for the number 39 of Alex Gannett at the front of the field. Cameron really is holding back the rest of them in the 96. DJ Kennington, the veteran, is stalking his prey. Mark Antoine Cameron, that car just will not turn right very well at all. This next turn is a right-hander. Sparks fly from underneath the 96. First time winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The 39 of Gannett will win it. Followed home by, was it, it was Kennington who got the 96 at the line just by a nose. How about Sam Fellows' career best sixth, LP Montura career best seventh, Cordemage ninth, Renamato tenth, Todd Lewis is in the pits. How does it feel to have a winning car at GP3R? Oh, this is amazing. It's been a few years, and they get Alex Dinette in the car and uh, to beat some of the best uh, road racers in uh, in. This series is amazing. Really happy for him. Congratulations. Thanks. Dave Jacobs has been in victory lane here in the past, and look at that. Cheers all around from DJ Kennington to Alex Gannett. And trouble on the last lap for the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Jumelay. That right rear wheel letting go. We'll be back for victory lane. And moments ago, the 39 of Alex Gannett let off a little steam in the form of tire smoke. Victory donuts for the youngster. Dave, th this is enormous. This is not just his first career win. This is the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières for every Quebecois driver. This is the pinnacle of their sport. Listen to the crowd. Letting him hear it in victory lane as he jumps onto the roof of that number 39 Ford. And Dave, this event is so big in Quebec, we're going to have to wait in line to have our turn with the winner. French language comes first, but let's look at these results, particularly 6 through 10. Now, you talked about it. Drivers like Ray Cordemanche Jr., TJ Renamato, a career best. Huge result for TJ Renamato. He's going to be ecstatic. Of course, look at the names 11 through 20 at Dumoulin Ranger, Dumoulin Lacroix, names that you would never imagine down there in disappointing Jacques Villeneuve in 26. Let's go back to Todd. It was a battle, it was a street fight, but Alex Gannett, you are a first-time winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tell me about crossing the finish line and getting that win. Man, what a time. Uh, to win here is just unbelievable, like you said. I finished second uh, a few times in the Pinty Series, but my first time winning a race, and what a better place to do it here with the 100,000 of fans we got out here, man. Pinty's did a good job, TSN, all the guys, uh, my whole team. I'm uh, just really happy, man. Unbelievable for moment for me. It's, uh, it's hard to get in the position to win one of these, especially here. I've been telling the guys the whole week, man, this series is stacked. Like, as the years go on, it's getting harder and harder to get a W, so... Man, it's a dream come true, especially in fear, in front of all my family, all my friends, all the great fans out here, man. It's uh, unbelievable for me. Congratulations, Alex Gannett, winner at GP3R. It's a victory lane speech that no doubt he has practiced many times in his head. He finally gets to deliver it here in 2022. And from the young excitement of a new winner to the older excitement of a savvy <laughs> veteran, let's go talk to our second place finisher, DJ Kennington. 
DJ Kennington with a second place runner up finish. What a fight you had on your hands to climb through the field in those closing laps. Ah, I sure did, man. The guys, Rick made a great call. The boys all actually made a group call there to put some tires on that Castro Edge Dodge near the end. And what a difference it made. Uh, we were coming through the field like gangbusters there. And it's a lot of fun when you have tires like that and still had some brakes left and so on. Old DJ likes to save his stuff. You know that, Todd. So CIM Metals, Spark Power, Castro Edge, I thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll ride transport, Brian Cathcart, everybody that makes this happen for us. Country Collision, Mom, Dad, Sid, Jamie, Chase, we're going to come home and see you with a good second place finish and I think maybe a points lead. DJ Kennington and Sun Chase are going to celebrate a second place finish here at GP3R. DJ knows he's not far off from having his arm around Chase while Chase is giving interviews. And while we'll take a look at the point standings, DJ was right. He does have a points lead. Now three over Mark Antoine Cameron. Lacroix drops all the way down to third. Two road races left on the series. One oval course with these points. Tannings have been flipped on their lid, Dave. And you can see Chase on the podium with DJ Cannington. Huge smile from your winner, though, Alex Gannett. This race on TSN has been brought to you by WeatherTech. Laser measured for a perfect fit. Nothing protects your car, truck, or SUV like WeatherTech. By Sunbelt Rentals. By QuickWick, the world's number one fire starter. And by eBay Motors, the right parts and the right vehicles at the right prices. Let's ride. What a big day. History was made by Alice Gannett, and I can guarantee you, Dave, history is going to be made next time you see us because we're going to be doing it in the dirt. But here at the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières for Motor, Dominic Gruger put on a wonderful event, and the drivers did not disappoint. Action packed from start to finish. There was action everywhere in this field. Drivers getting after it, driving broken race cars. They did what they had to do. See some hurt race cars and some hurt feelings, but not by that driver. Alex Gannett wins for the first time in the NASCAR Pinty Series. I have a feeling we may just see a little bit more of Alex Gannett moving forward as the champagne shower takes place at the podium. Let's get dirty for the next time from all of us at Fuel Media. We'll see you then. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.